So oh. welcome to today's fit. Uh, I've got uh, George Williams who owns GX Gloves. He's in doing a driver fit today. Um, so um, played, played uh, American Collegiate Golf. Still plays very good standard now. So uh, unsurprisingly, looking at the scale of him, large hitter. Um, so we're going to run through the driver spec and see what we can do. Where are you playing your golf now? Bit right. Uh, what club? Mm. I'm playing at Brockett at the moment. Okay. Yeah, Brockett yeah. Hall in Welling. Um, I played most of my golf at Nebworth. Uh, Brockett okay, has. Yeah, yeah. Brockett's Driven past Nebworth many times up the A1. Oh, have you? <laughs> yeah, you can see it from there, can't you? Mm. People, I would, I'd be practicing on that field when I was younger, and yeah. always get people say, "Oh, I think I saw you on the field the other day." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same my, signature hair for many my, years, is it? Yeah. <laughs> my PE teacher would always uh, always tell me that he saw me practicing. <laughs> Told me some better grades. Yeah. So no. where am I aiming exactly with this? Is it um So basically it's just the right of the white line, so effectively dead down the line the map. Okay. But um, just in terms of visually, if I put the line all the way over it looks kind of quite skewed. So okay. um, essentially just to the right of where the ball starts on the screen. Okay. So the, the bunker by the green in the background, the left edge of that. Okay. Yeah. Got ya. How, well, how often are you managing the play now? I'm, I'm, I'm getting out most weeks. Uh, I'll probably play nine holes mm -hmm. twice in the week and then I'll play at the weekend as well, yeah. 18 holes. I like to get out after work, go to the range, hit a few putts. It's just great for facilities at Brockett. Uh, it's it's, it's yeah. my favorite place. But yeah, one of my favourite places in the world. How are the uh, how are the courses holding up this winter? They're looking really nice, actually. They're um, a few years ago they 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 would struggle quite a bit with them, mm -hmm. but now they've sort of got a few more. Um, Bit more expertise working on the course. Yeah. And it's honestly, it's the best condition winter course I've I've played in England. Um, it's obviously notoriously hard in Hertfordshire because it's more more clay based, so it doesn't I, drain I that well. Some wet rounds of golf out there yeah. in the past. Yeah. So it's just really difficult to get any to get good condition courses out there. But they do a great job. And what shafts, because obviously you've got the wraps on them, what shafts have you got oh in God. driver, fairway wood <laughs> and uh, two iron? This is a uh, hazardous smoke, Yep, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that's not very good, is it? <laughs> We've got the wraps <laughs> covering. We can't this tell is anyway, also the can same. This is the yeah. same one, actually. Do you remember what hazardous color? smoke? Are they the, the black, the kind of one with the black writing? Or... That one's got like grey writing, I think. Okay, yeah. This one's the smoke thing. <laughs> and. Uh, would that be the 70 or 80? Yeah, 70. 70. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And 80 in the fairway wood? Or the same 70? Uh, 80. Yeah, cool. And then the two iron? That one is ninety. That was also has. I can't. I don't know the weight of that one though. Is it the same? But it has the series. Same, same well, it's series, probably the yeah. thought the ninety in this. Okay. Okay. And then swing wise, that you work here at the moment, or you go back to as a key. Key feel, key swing thought. I am um, at the moment. I'm, I'm going for a little bit of a change, um, which made me slightly nervous about coming today. So I was <laughs> like, "Oh, you know, <laughs> going for a bit of a change." But uh, you know, I'm, I'm a I'm a massive uh, early extender yeah. with my hips, uh, especially when I'm not not playing my best. It tends to get worse. Okay. So I'm really just working on getting getting back here and then turning through 
keep it keeping at the, the angle of these hips, like yeah, yeah. you know, the belt angle is small like this, yeah, rather yeah. than like that. So it's starting to come kind of up and that way, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm in a bit of a club flipper, so yeah. I'm trying to sort of hold it square more. Any for lower back. back issues, any injuries at all from a back point of view? <laughs> nah, not really. Uh, I do now that I'm trying to implement this this move a bit more. I do feel a little bit more tender in my okay. lower back. I don't know if that's just because it's quite a different move to what I'm used to. Possibly, yeah. Any general mobility have you been to? Would you say you've generally been tight-ish, kind of hamstrings and things, or generally mobility being good? My old, hamstrings not old aren't, to have too many they are a bit, bit tighter, yeah. yeah. What, what, would you say that there's a correlation between being tight in your hamstrings and sort of early extension of yeah. the hips? Because what, really? what it doesn't facilitate okay. is, is that so if they're, if they're tight it pulls through so it tends to shorten the so interesting so definitely so you've got a lot of people who are sat at a desk there's not moving here not keeping mobility so mobility around the pelvis is really really key to mm. being able to to stay in posture rotate and clear clear the space to stay in <coughs> posture and keep your pelvic um I guess pitch the same through the swing so, so. you'd would you say for someone like myself who struggles with that pri primarily to Keep like stretch the hamstrings quite regularly. Uh, well, I think, I mean, anywhere else? Yeah, I mean, Kate would certainly say you know um, uh, rolling your feet, calves, um, anything kind of like that all kind of tightens up and pulls right. on the. Basically, anything here pulls on in the back of your knee, which pulls mm. on your hamstring. It pulls there. So general pelvis and lower body, lower body mobility, but also um, some people get kind of tight through the. I can never remember the name, but kind of um, the condition you might get is plantar fasciitis, but in the sole of the foot, actually right. kind of roller. It's horribly unpleasant, but actually getting a spiky ball and rolling the sole okay. of your foot, almost like the um, the ligaments and tendons, like you get in the in your palm, mm. in the sole of the foot, get really quite tight, okay. and that feeds all the way back up there. So if you do suffer with a little bit of lower back tightness, any kind of general rotational mobility, but leg mobility, okay. and stretching. Mm. Well, I'm going to get on that. When I get to it's when just I not get very nice to work on. Yeah. It hurts. <laughs> well, it'll be nice to work on if I know it's going to help me yeah, yeah, yeah. stop getting like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stretch for a, f a few more seconds that in that respect. Mm. Generally, from a Obviously, yeah. from a shot pattern point of view, um, would you tend to have seen left as the miss? From what you're saying there, Obviously that one's just path parcel change, changing a little bit as you're doing. Yeah, swing so work. I'd say it does vary a bit. To be fair, at the moment, just measure the specs on that yeah, one. On. Well. At the moment, now that I'm sort of trying to ingrain this move a bit, yep. a bit more, I am seeing as as I have done there. A more of a more of a fade yeah but um i do feel like i've always played my best golf when i faded it okay because my bad shots will be will sort of flare up a little bit land soft don't run out too much yeah um so i've always liked to see that mm. in my in my shots especially off the tee okay so one thing that we talked about just before starting um with your irons, they've got a, a much heavier grip on, counterbalance yeah. grip. So um, it's an interesting, I, I think that is a bit of an insight into where the balance point is that suits you because um, what it's done is it's made the swing weight very light, even though they're longer than standard, they've got a heavy shaft in. Mm. Um, they, I don't know how heavy those grips are, what the back weight is. It's 18 gram tungsten weight in there. Okay. So. I think the frame of the grip's going to be a little bit heavier than normal as well, mm. um, because to get the swing weight at the length they're at, that's about mm, best part of ten swing weight points lighter. Really? Um, so is that a, that's considerable? About amount. fifty grams more than normal. Fifty? <laughs> yeah. Really? Um, so, uh, but what that does allude to is. If that feels comfortable, yeah. then having heavy bottom end is likely to get dropped in behind you right. and cause you to then have to recover the head. Okay. So that if that feels like you're under control with that, then having it massed through the club but not necessarily in the bottom end, um, that does does track 
within reason through the shaft um, <laughs> shaft setups. You've got the top end of the bag as well. The, the hazardous, the smoke blacks are, are a kind of upper mid balance point, so they're not a heavy tip end. Right. So um, what that would do is it means that the the bottom end of the club, as you start down, is less likely to get into into there. So if yeah, you tend to struggle with a little bit of a stand and a little bit of fetch, mm. then the more behind it gets, the more aggressively you're going to have to collect the club head to not lose one right. But then that also creates the flip. So it kind of it can exacerbate it a little bit. Whereas if the club's coming coming out, out in front of you more, then you can just turn and leave the hands quiet. Yeah. So that would suggest that that weight profile is going to be more comfortable for you and give you more control of the club head. Okay. But they are pretty heavy. They are, yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel like... <laughs> Because basically, the reason I have these is, is because I had an eight iron in the bag with this mm. on for, for a while. Yeah. And I felt like every time I had that eight iron, I had so much more control if I wanted to hit a, like a three quarter shot, a mm. half swing through the wind. I was just piercing it all the time. Like, and I felt like my timing was so much better with that eight yeah. iron as opposed to the clubs where I didn't have that grip on, I just had a regular multi-compound on it or something. Um, yeah, and so with, with a regular, with something like that, the contrast would be, the multi-compounds are lightish, right. um, but at the longer than standard length, the proportionally the balance gets a little bit heavier. So whilst the head weight doesn't change, the longer lever means they swing more bottom end heavy. Mm. So with a light grip on, you'd have been, it would, the, the balance is likely to be much more bottom end weighted. So quite a, you know, I mean, a really significant change in where the weight sits, mm. but certainly, you know, it'd be interesting as we go through with the driver specs to see, right, does that correlate to putting the mass there in the shaft itself, or, yeah. or do you need the extra weight in the grip? So. Yeah, because mm. I've been quite reluctant to do, it, to, to put any them grips onto my woods. I haven't got one in my uh, three wood either. Yeah. So, Although That's purely based on feel. I don't know anything about the numbers, but okay. it would be interesting to... Yeah, and we'll be able to test with well. even just a 10 gram uplift in grip right. weight as well. Yeah. Um, going to, I mean, looking at kind of hand size and things and the grip size you've got on, everything bar the driver, they're all mm. mid-sized. Yeah. Um, so um, there are definitely grips so we can keep the weight kind of in line with a standard grip weight yeah. and then go 10, 12 grams heavier, 15 okay. grams heavier and see how that affects, does that help timing or does that actually make it a little unwieldy? Um, so we can we can definitely test that as well. Awesome. Let me try and hit a few straight ones then. <laughs> I'll have, have as many as you need to feel suitably limber. Naturally right-handed? I'm naturally left-handed. Ah, right, okay. Does that, so uh, that, that, that absolutely supports what we've just been talking about as well. Really? So if you're, like I'm right-handed playing right-handed, it's much easier to save the club head with a kind of palm palm forward recovery. Mm. That's pretty controlled. Um, whereas if I were to do it the other way around and have this be a dominant hand and then to recover it that way, that's a much more volatile move because a kind of a backhand rotation is much stronger. So if you've got to fetch it through, you're likely either to really hold it off and leave the face miles open mm. or rip it around and smother it. So actually, it's not a kind of absolute rule, but 60, 70% of the time, Higher bounce point suits top hand dominant play. Really? Because that, that allows your body to rotate and collect it and leave your hand in a really quiet position yeah. rather than bringing in that, that strong rotational recovery. Yeah. I think that's a good word to use to let, to like, let I think, do you say let your body collect it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah mm. that, that's, that's a feel that I really like, sort of. Okay, yeah. And I do feel like the, the heavier grips help me do that. Yeah. In, so I remember back way. to um, when I played tennis as a junior. I'm very right-handed, so yeah. a single-handed backhand was either in the net or over the back net. Mm. But, and so I went double-handed backhand, and that helped control the racket face, mm. but it stopped my top hand over-dominating the racket face, so sending it, you know, the volatility of shot was like single-handed, I could hit one shot in 100 like Roger Federer, and the rest would go like kind of or red, red arrows. Yeah. Um, but then a double-handed backhand was my best shot once mm. I went to that. So. Using the body more. Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. Just, just quietens down that sort of strong dominant top hand. Yeah. So. What ball do you play? I use a uh, TP 
5x okay. for the most part. Just make sure they've got a few of those that have got the silver dot on, so they're using the right ball. Did you start playing from a young age? <clears throat> yeah, since about 10. Mm -hmm. It's a bit right as well. I mean, they're consistent. And driver generally, generally a club that you've felt over the years is a strength in the bag, or um, when I was younger, it was the best thing in my bag. But now mm. it's it's not for sure. It's um, it's it can be when I'm playing good. It can it like I'll go for a round where it will it will look quite impressive. You know, I'll, the people I'm playing, with, wow, you 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 drive it so nice. But um, too many rounds. It just doesn't feel like I'm getting it right. It's, it's a little bit handsy here. Okay. So um, like you got to pl play shots the whole time rather yeah. than just swing. Okay. Got to sort of protect it somehow mm -hmm. uh, uh, at times. Do you feel like you've got to swing back? I say back from full, kind of <clears throat> um, steer it a little bit. Do, is it? Yeah, I don't. I'm. I've not been someone especially in recent times that, that stood on a reachable par four and thought, all right, yeah, let me get out of this one, you know, yeah. sort of, well, like the I worry, fourth, I worry more. The Palmerston or something. Third, yeah, third, yeah, third, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 I worry more about, mm, if I don't quite get this, I'm going to be like, might have to chip out or something. Okay, yeah. And I, and I feel comfortable hitting a shot and having 80 yards in, yeah. 70 yards in, um, right. which is why I feel like I'm leaving a lot in the, leaving a lot on the field, so to speak. Because mm. I would like to have that confidence. Got it. But I can still, you know, I can still get a score in somehow, at times. <laughs> what I'll do, I'll pop the Pop the TP fives down, and we'll get kind of, we'll get kind of four or five. Just get a good base on, assuming you <coughs> feel good to go. I feel pretty warmed up. <laughs> T height. If you want it higher or lower, just let me know. I can go. That should be all right. Anti-clockwise to bring it out a little bit, and clockwise to put it in. Which of the two courses do you prefer? I always, I always thought Palmerston was a great test. The Palmerston is Melbourne's got the best course. holes on, but the Palmerston I thought was the best course. Yeah, I think the Palmerston for sure, because I just love playing in the tree, in the pine yeah. trees, in the sort of front of the back, front of the front nine, and then sort of towards the back of the back nine. Mm. I can't get enough of it, yeah. But then you've got 18 on the Melbourne, which is really stunning, because yeah. par five over water. Problem is you go for the tee shot too much to... R ruin the hole by trying to hit the tee shot yeah. too far. And, go, oh, and no, it, the thing is, out. it's so wide as well. So you're like, oh, I can probably give us I a crack. You don't, yeah, you don't, you don't pick. The problem with that sort of shot is you don't pick a spot like you would yeah. normally, and then you flail away at it and go, oh, I'm in the bunker on the left. Yeah. 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 Or you just creep it into the left rough, and it's so thick over there. You just yeah. So do you, know. when you're playing, do you like to visualize a shot? Do you pick out a spot? How do you approach a tee shot? I only shot? pick out a starting, um, a starting line. Yeah. I like to be quite precise with the starting line, and then mm. I sort of more 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 feel a shot rather than see it sort of all right starting it there. It's going to come up here. If I just sort of feel just depending what the feel hole how how much yeah. I'm going to fade it. Okay. If I am fading it, um, like particular like particularly uh, today, um, I'm hitting quite a prominent fade today. Um, more so because I'm trying trying to in um, ingrain a. Uh, a swing thought, but mm. I would. This is I, I would see this on the range, and then I would go out and sort of like, okay, my target's here. I need to feel it. Um, I need to feel a 15-yard fade, so okay. I feel that much, you know. Yep.
there's a, obviously the sitting at the target line, you see just a three in the distance, so it's just hanging over the target line. That's the last target. Yeah, I like, I like, I like, that's the sort of shape I quite, quite yeah. enjoy seeing, you know. You can say you'd be wanting to see it, if anything, just with that little bit of a bleed left to right yeah. rather than Yeah, I, like, I really like that, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I like the feel of being able to lay, aim down the left side and I know it's just, I know it's going to move that way, you know. Yeah. And do you generally prefer to see the flight a little bit flatter, more forwards, or do you like it kind of <coughs> like to get a little bit more height? I like it lower. Mm -hmm. I like a lower flight. Um, I feel like I've always hit it better. Yeah. I hit more fairways when I've hit it a little lower. Um, and I've got a bit more distance out of it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, see one will be good. Yeah, thanks. Okay, there's definitely, I think as you alluded to earlier, it's definitely, a, it's, it's not as connected as I'd like to see it through. There's definitely a little bit more going on through impact that you've got a fine square with it. If, mm. if anything, actually, what, what's good for you is that your, your general strike point uh, is just a little bit into the heel. Okay. So that just helps to gear it a little bit left to right. So, um, yeah, in, in the same way that, um, you know, we're... Stuart and I last night in the, the live were talking about strike point and knowing that actually your strike point complements the kind of shot shape you want to see. So the nice thing is that you know, by getting the contact just erring into the heel side, you're not having to play as much of a fade because it naturally the gearing is naturally going to take it that way. Yeah. Um, I think that's also where, you know, for the slightly stronger flight, you do tend to squeeze it a little bit. Mm. Um, I think some of that is... Possibly some of that is managing the setup where if you were to sweep it and hit up on it a little bit more, that that might bring in a little more over the left. So it makes more sense to stay on top Cover and squeeze it, and lead it. It mm -hmm. makes it easier to lead the clubber through the ball if you're just squeezing it a fraction. Um, but yeah, the tailor heads are very good at managing spin, um, especially if you've got a little bit of a squeeze. The, mm -hmm. the weight being further forward definitely keeps the spin down. They suit. More than other brands, they suit that a little bit of a, for a better phrase, a little bit of a trap, but right. at a higher speed as well. Yeah. Uh, and then aren't trying to pop it up in the air. So certainly the um, the sim, if you take you know, one of the ones we'll start testing with the uh, the Q10, the LS, yeah. the sort of the Stealth Plus style heads weight forward, definitely um, are going to keep the base launch angle a little bit more forward. So okay. certainly, I mean, head style, I can understand why that's been a good head for you for managing ball flight. Mm. It's just a great head for keeping that flight down and forwards and piercing a bit. Yeah. Um, but it, it just, it only looks like as you're getting into the ball that the, that the club and you are a little out of sync and there's just that little bit of a flick rather than being able just to keep going and the club stay mm. connected. Um, so I think one, you know, one of the things we'll look at is you know, maybe just shifting, what is it, D3, it's quite a neutral swing weight. Just moving balance point around and seeing around at what point, how far can we push it before it starts to get a little bit dropped behind? Right. Because uh, it might well be, I doubt we're going to need to go heavily tip end, but creating just a little bit more of a drop means mm. you can keep on going through the shot and create a little bit more of a late hit. Because um, if we go back to your irons and the, the grip weight, there's a lot of 
total weight there. Mm. Um, so that could be where the club just stays a, bit, a little bit behind and you can just then manage the face through. I think with the driver and the speed we want to get, we want to keep the handle in coming with you, yeah. but maybe just use the balance point to delay the hit a little bit more. Mm. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's not performing badly at the moment, but I can see where it's hard for you to just stand and deliver with Frank it and it. have the same yeah. feel day in day out also you, you've got to rely yeah. on your feel for the shot yeah um so yeah there's there's definitely i think in terms of you know data wise there might not be a huge gain i'd like to think we can just pick that up a little bit mm. but certainly in terms of kind of cleanliness of timing through and make it feel a bit simpler i'm sure we can do something yeah. about that sure so so what i'm going to do first is I'll get the kind of current equivalent of that head and mm. then I'm gonna, gonna get a couple of different dead weights and see at what point do we start to push it too heavy, bring it back down, play around with balance points and see yeah. if we can just find everything together. Perfect, yeah, sounds good. What I'll do with the grip side of things, I'll keep it to start with, I'll keep it pretty new, uh, fairly standard. Yeah. Once we get close on the grip spec, then I'll go and put the bigger grip on, look at some different grip weights and see, once we get the, with a kind of neutral grip weight, once we get the spec there, we'll then test putting extra grip weight on and okay. how that sure. affects all the timing. We often find with the driver, because it's the lightest club in the bag, the grip weight proportionally affects it more. So, right, yeah. you might be able to get away with some different grip weights in the irons because it's proportionally it's less of a change in the total weight of the club. Right. Um, so, a, for example, a six iron head's 60 grams heavier than the driver head, and the shaft's another 50 grams heavier than the driver shaft. So, mm. you, you're already 110 grams heavier, so a 10 gram change is less of an effect, whereas proportionally on the driver, it can be quite a, quite a big amount. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Lovely. Do you want me to talk you through what we're changing or do you just want me to hang <coughs> your stuff and... I don't mind hearing it, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so starting off, current version of the whiteboard in the x flexes, they're really, really even balanced. So they're not a, they're not a counterbalance sharp, but okay. they're very neutral, but they're a really stable feel. Um, so uh, a lot of, lot of heavy hitters, um, you know, you've got a lot of speed, um, tend to, yeah, and especially if you don't want to feel it going left, mm. it, it kind of makes sense to start with something that's going to be a really tight feel because it's going to take out the sensation of a bit of pop. Okay. So it's it shouldn't feel like the club the clubs making it go left. It should feel like it's hanging on really tight. Right. So, got ya. But if it's the shaft we think it is underneath the wrap, <laughs> it's not dissimilar on weight, uh, but a slightly different balance point. So essentially it's going to be a case of that was interesting that one changing a changing a variable each time we change shaft to say right we know which bit we're changing yeah what effect does it have because for some players you get the club dropping behind it leaves the face <laughs> open others mm. you get the head dropping behind it makes them fetch it so right. we all react slightly differently to to the change so there's no if someone hits it a certain way okay this change will create this it's like right. it, it might <laughs> but it might you. go the other way Just take, I'm gonna take the dead weight up a little bit. So the first swing looked very similar to what happens with the current ones. Yeah. And then you managed it really well, so. That was interesting that, because it felt, it felt didn't feel dissimilar to a lot of the ones I hit with that. Mm -hmm. But this one went straight, obviously, rather than uh, maybe, would you say it's helping me sort of get it into that position of a bit more like this? 
Potentially, I mean, in terms of from a, if we look just it's a snapshot, if we look at the data, I'll just take off the warm up swings. Um, the swing path's a little bit square. Oh, I see, okay. So, actually, let me just see from a raw weight point of view, because that one's got the fairly neutral grip weight on it. So it's 329 grams. Now, the, I guess the wrap will have added a little bit of weight onto the shaft. Right. Um, so. 329. Okay, this is three and a half grams heavier. So the slight change in weight position will have a little bit of an effect. Mm. Um, but so looking at that and those two being almost identical weights, no surprise that it didn't change through the ball. That first one still looked like it got away from and you had to manage the left miss. Yeah. So I'm going to take the base weight up a few grams. Okay. It doesn't necessarily take much going from 73 to 77. So it doesn't take a huge amount to mm. start to make a noticeable difference. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Well, this is cool. <laughs> it's got to look good. Oh, 100%. I've got a couple of them here, yeah. So just the dot on the top. Top, yeah? Yeah, thanks. Up, like that? Yeah, perfect, thank you. Okay, that's quite different straight away. So, a little bit more weight. It sort of ties into the irons with those grips. A little, with a lighter weight, it just looks like it lets you, as you get to kind of, sort of halfway down, mm. essentially just overwork the club and it ends up being a little bit of a flip. I think that's where that flick comes from. Right. So essentially kind of energy into the handle outweighs the, effectively inertia in the club, and it ends up getting a little that way. Now yeah. it allows you to manage it, but you've got to steer it a bit, whereas that one, a little heavier, club drops in a bit more, so you've got more to hit against. So actually you can then carry on going through the shot. Yeah. Hence that's now got the path dead square and it started right rather than left. So the club just drops down, drops in a little bit more behind you. And then you can build speed with the weight rather yeah. than overwork it and then hang on. And so the, the weight is more towards the grip on this one, uh, is that right? Or... Um, so it's... A f yeah, a little bit in this, I mean marginal. Or compared to my um, driver? A similar balance point, but that one sort of, well, the base weight before the wrap goes on is around 72, 73, similar yeah. to this, um, but it is an upper mid balance. That one, the dead weight's five, five or grams heavier. Okay. Um, so that little bit more weight gives you a bit more to drive oh, so against. So weight, is it? Is it in total weight, weight through. through the yeah, whole Yeah, so this one again is really than... evenly distributed so Got far. you, okay, fine. So, um, one of the things, talking to George there, is that um, essentially every player has got an optimum weight to be able to build speed with, but not to get caught behind him. So it's finding enough weight to actually use the weight to, to drive with uh, and not go so heavy they get stuck behind. So light doesn't always mean quicker. Yeah, so that, that one is now starting to drop into line. So it's, it's got a calculation on the spin there, but what we can see here from oh, your so delivery lines, it's now allowing, it's, it's shallowing the plane a little bit, mm. which then drops the path more neutral, which then allows you to hit square through it rather than have to get across and trap it to manage the face. Yes. So both of those from a um, you know, numbers point of view, We've gone from three and a half out to into one to zero. And then face to path, first one's a little bit open, but you then got that squared off. So that then starts to allow you to keep going through the shot yeah. and it's not starting left. So then you're not having to go right to hit, you're not having to hit a pull fade 
it's just a, you're now hitting through the line and then mm. depending on what you do with the club face, you can then shape it off that. Yeah. So going a little bit heavier, uh, as we can see, club speed's very, very similar, yeah. but we're now starting to pick up ball speed because the timing's better. So, so is this um, effectively like helping to get the path more, more sort of neutral, you'd say, rather yeah, than rather so than because I want to flip it on here. So if it's if it's light, as you effectively put NG into the handle, yeah. it doesn't quite do this. But essentially, it works that way. Yeah. So the, if you override the weight here, you pull down. Essentially, it stands that up. Uh, and then to not, if you just keep going with that, it wraps over. Mm. So some of that, and therefore maybe a little bit of that extension, could be, if it's there, you've then got to work the face. Yeah. Rather than a little bit more weight on it, as you start down, if it's the club drops in more, the plane shallows out a little bit, so you're then able to use that weight to drop it and then work through there with. So you're kind of hitting through the line bit mm. rather than kind of over and managing it. Sure. Right. So I'm going to push that a little heavier <coughs> still. So that's definitely a step in the right direction. So effectively, would you you would say a, a heavier drive would be better for me, right? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting because when I was young, when I was a lot younger, I used out of no like choice. I used he heavier drivers, heavier yeah. driver shafts, just because I that's all I had. Okay. So yeah. and I felt like. At that time, I didn't swing it very fast at all, but I always felt like I was a really straight hitter. Um, yeah, and it can, it can, it, I don't know it's, it might have had an influence on some of the leverage that you use the swing now. Yeah. When you build your speed, it would have, would have influenced it a bit. Your mm. technique would have developed around that a certain amount. Um, but equally speaking, it, it's, it's really finding the setup that as you start down, that change from zero to 113 miles an hour, that's, it's a lot of acceleration rate. Right. So there's a lot of energy going into the handle. So th it's, it's finding the amount of inertia in the club to match energy in, and then everything syncs up. Right. Um, so if you've used heavy when you're younger, then that will affect the way you develop your speed and how you put your energy into the handle of the club a little bit. So right. it would have shaped up a certain amount. It's a little bit of one thing kind of shapes the other slightly, but, mm. um, but equally speaking, certainly now, the moment you drop light, you've then got to change your, you've got to manipulate through the ball, whereas the heavier weight drops it in and you can then, you're just mm. hitting through the line. So we've just evened out the club plane a little bit. Yeah, yeah okay. Go another six, seven grams. There's no point in going subtle in the change. It's fine too heavy and then bring it back down. I'm just going to put the sole weight central on this rather than largely in the heel. When I go back home, I'll just sell it. They just, they just fitted me in the heaviest, stiffest shaft they had is just swinging it too hard. <laughs> As opposed to, well, I was just flipping it and they had to yeah, yeah. try and control it. Okay, so there we go. That's, nice this one. one's up at 84 grams now, rather than 77. Wow. 84. So is that more of the, is that more of like a three wood type spec? It, it's the kind of shaft that a lot shaft. of, even that a lot of strong players would use in three wood. Um, right. So uh, we're seeing driver shaft weights, particularly you know, looking at the tall players, a lot of them would have been historically in high 70s, around 80 gram um, yeah. in the driver, but where they're now working on, it's more rotation speed um, to not then get stuck and flip. So, you know, Dustin's in the 60s, Rory's down in 65, six grams now. Uh, Tiger's down at 60 odd grams now. Right. So um, I think a lot of, I mean, you still get some players that are up around 80 grams. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, look at Gary Woodland or someone like that, you use his weight. He's got that kind of pull down on the handle. So he's always played a slightly heavier shot. Heavier. Um, so it's still, it's still got to be relevant to the player, but a lot more players are going lighter on tour purely for that speed generation. Right. But this would be where quite a lot of fairway wood shafts would sit. Yeah, for them, high 70s, low 80s. Okay. Um, yeah, it's interesting because it was always notoriously like the hev heavier or like faster, faster swingers would have a heavier driver shaft. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, it, used, it used to be the thought ago. process that, that, yeah. you, that the weight helps to control it, but actually right. it can start to get the club out of sync. So right. you think if you fire fast, then the club can get stuck behind. Whereas if it's a more of a kind of a, a I guess more of a kind of a Kepka style, you pull and everything pulls down and builds, yeah. then actually the weight can help. But if you've got a, you know, Justin Thomas kind of snap, 
then mm. that weight's going to get stuck behind. Right. So that's where he's also uh, is in. Certainly, I'd, I'd have to check what he's in now, but he he was in the same shaft that Tiger was in the VF, the graphite design, the VF5 TX, which is the, actually a 60 gram. The yeah. orange one. Uh, the one with the red tip. It's the latest oh, okay. one that they launched. Right. Um, but you know, again, he's got that real kind of quick snap of the hips, yeah, which really gets, quick. if you go heavy, it gets a separation. And mm. then either you're going to be very, very, very strong for everything to stay through and pull on it, or, yeah. or you're just going to snap in two. Yes. Felt slightly dragged. Okay. Yeah. And this is where push it too far, and then the, the whole club gets that little bit behind that it can bring in mm. that little bit of a you know, can late recovery. recover and smother. And then the next one, the handle goes up and it goes right. So, a little bit of a save. Yeah. Heavy's fine. Not bad. In terms of it gives you something to hit against, but yeah. that started to get now a little behind you, and we're starting <laughs> to see the face starting to go closed, open, right. closed, open. So uh, just yeah. a little bit harder work. So okay. at least we've now found kind of top end. We know where you know that one's a little bit too light. We know 77's good. We know 84 is too much. Yeah. So. Okay. So you play the par three up at Brockett much? I do, yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's a great par three. It's a bit like the Palmerston, really, in the I used it's in to the play, trees and stuff. So, I mean, this is going back <coughs> 44, 24, 5, 6 years. Um, yeah. There was a, kind of a deal where I think one of the founder members had a, like a, a week's worth of use for someone to just use between your few days between Christmas and New Year. Yeah. And so I used that. And, um, and I used to spend quite a lot of time on the par three course yeah uh, it was great for example like 60 so odd yards up to about 160 i think yeah it's great fun yeah it's got some good and it, was, uh, it never had anyone on it it's got some good variation yeah there's never any it's still never anyone on it mm. they've got a grass range in the summer now so yeah. it's a nice place to spend time mm. i think the thing when, when facilities are good it's easy to spend time practicing when the facilities oh yeah are nice. for sure Okay, I'll watch one more of that, I'll go back to that. Speed was still a few grams heavier, still 80 grams now rather than that 77 of the speed run it. Right. And it's interesting, both of the ones where they're a little heavier, the first one's gone left a little bit. Gone left, more. yeah. Path still, with the weight, the path still, first swing, each one is still down the line. So it's whether you will inevitably react a little bit just by seeing that shot. Yeah. Subconsciously, you'll do something to Maybe, try and yeah. square it off. In but the, back the of first my head. swings with the heavyweights are all dead down the line. Yeah, okay. Good ball speed. Okay, so I that one. Yeah, like I felt that much more in Gave in that here a little, little bit. bit more. I mean, that one, I think, that one's the nice. top end. I think we're in that yeah. very, if we go above 80, I think we push it a little too far. Yeah. But certainly in that very high 70s, 80 gram is in a good place. I'm going to mm. gonna fetch a, rather than going back and forth, back and forth, I'm just going to fetch a few just to, to grab and okay. test out rather than every shaft switching room. You playing any competitive golf this year? I like to play in the county stuff. I like to play mm. county champs. Just stroke play, then match play. I love the match play bit. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm definitely gear, gear myself up for that. 
That's at Welling Garden City this year. Okay. Nick Faldo's uh, yeah. home, well, early home course. Mm. Which, uh, yeah, it's nice to play there. It's a short, shorter track, but- um, I was gonna say that's more positional course, isn't it? Yeah, they get, they get the greens in really good condition over there. I know, yeah, for a county champs, it'll, they'll, be, they'll get it immaculate, <clears throat> which I'm excited for. Mm. And then, yeah, if I sort of, my handicap sort of drifted up a little bit over the last year or two, so I, if I get a little cut, I'll try and get into some other events as well. What are you playing Cheers. off now? I'm a plus one now. Mm. Still get you in basically anything. There are a few that I think that now the new now. with the new handicap yeah. system, I think you need a bit more like mm. I think a s solid plus two you yeah. need to get in sort of most stuff now. Just look like it started to go back the other way very slightly. What do you mean? Like in terms of where just okay, nowhere near what your current one does, but just yeah. just had a little bit of a little bit of a handsy closure. Yeah. Slide. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I felt that. that yeah, was, uh, just, just didn't quite track cool as well. It's interesting seeing how with the other ones, they like the the TR black that you just hit looked like yeah. it just stayed in plane and let. You, I had to weight the head up a little bit more on this one. Right. So, kind of artificially weighting up. So I think that just lost you a little bit of feel for the club head. Okay. I'm just going to pop the normal size grip. I don't want to don't want to change the grip weight yet. Okay. So. Where were you at college at in the US? Uh, UCF, Central Florida. Oh, Central Florida. Yeah. yeah. Any worst standout you got to play during that time, course-wise, in any? Uh, what like tournament-wise? Um, I'd say the probably the one of the nicest courses. I played um, NCAA regionals at uh, Yale. Oh, uh, okay. Yale, yeah. Yale Golf Club. That was that was beautiful there. I had a um, friend of mine that was at Yale, and um, although a long time after I was, uh, well, not I was, long time after kind of my age group would have been there. Yeah. And um, yeah, he said how good the course was there. Yeah. yeah it's, it's Pete Dye. I, I think yeah. every, any time I play a Pete Dye, I just love it. Mm. I think they like are tough exceptional. Course, <laughs> I just love the way like the greens are designed. Mm -hmm. I mean, at Yale, I've never seen greens like it. There's if you, you there's 25, 30 foot putts that have got three breaks in them. Like there's so I many. Say there are quite a few that have got lots of tons of them, almost like yeah. a Redden style greens where they've got if that's the right terminology where they've got kind of high, low, high. Yeah. Yeah. I think I probably had my best round round there as well, and it was probably the it was the final round. It was probably the most important round of of my life because I wasn't actually at UCF at that time. Mm -hmm. I was in New York, and so I had a nice little 65 on the final day. Got noticed by UCF, and then <laughs> shipped off to Florida. So <laughs> slightly better winters. Could not ask for more than that. <laughs> if I knew how important it was, then uh, might have been a bit more difficult. <laughs> Okay, ball speed's just got it. So this one I've left a little bit more, it's natural swing weight's a little bit heavier. Um, now that one in particular, ball speed's just jumped. Right, and that felt really nice. I don't know if it was just a good shot, yeah. but it did feel good through impact. Mm -hmm. um, 
maybe mitigating that that flip a little more. Um, maybe a little bit. It's the same weight, but same base weight as the Speeder NX, but the but there's a little bit more balance down the bottom end of the shell. Right. A little bit. It's not it's not a heavily tip weighted shell, but it's just coming out a heavier swing weight on that uh, on that head. The sticker still. Yeah. On that. I can always put another one on if need be. Would you say that? Um, <coughs> If someone like myself comes in who's who's saying, look, I'm I'm trying to make a little change. I'm not mm. swinging at my 100. I'm not swinging at 100 right now. Is that good for a fitter like yourself because you can then work on uh, mitigating the bad shots more so than if they were swinging it good? I think if you're if you as long as you've gone through a bit of the swing process yeah. rather than sort of saying, right, I'm going to be working on this because then you don't quite know what's going to change. Right. But um, from what you've described about changing, we can we can ha let the club help you make it, but also make sure we pitch it at a point that works for a well-timed swing. Mm. So like, we, it's almost because just not going too forgiving on it because if you're working on something, the yeah. timing's not quite bedded in. You want it so to it's a sort slightly of not go stronger too much move. the way. Right. Yeah, so in the same way, if you get... Um, you get a junior getting older, you challenge them a little bit because you don't want to go out of it in five months' yeah. time. Similarly, for you doing a bit of swing work, I don't. I, it, it makes me look to the one that, when you put a stronger move on, works really well, rather than the one that looks a little bit easier because a confident swing is going to be the stronger one today. If that mm. makes sense. Kind of that's going to be where the where we want the swing to get to. Sure. Where it doesn't necessarily mean I want you to be have to be all guns blazing at it, but just one that looks a, a really kind of slightly more solid move yeah. um, I, we, we need it to be able to cater for that rather yeah. than just being that for a little, little bit in the future rather than just straight for yeah, now yeah. exactly yeah. okay yeah unless you said to me like i don't want to have to you know I, I much prefer to swing within myself and quiet it down yeah um you've got some pace on you though so i'd rather have one that doesn't need you to get after it but allows you to should you want to mm. Yeah, that's that is um, that is where I would like to get you're, to. You're sure. not hitting driver because you just want to put it in play. No, you're, you're getting the driver out at 300 yards plus. You, it, it's there to be sent mm. rather than steered into play. Yeah. A bit okay. just left. I'll watch one more of that and I'll take it back to one that we went to oh, earlier. Almost just to kind of normalise it relative to something I've seen here before. I think we probably just need to rein it back a fraction from where that is. Yeah. But again, having yeah, it just shows having a bit of mass at least gives you something to know where the club is to get a feel for mm. where the club head is. I think we probably want yeah. to say rein it back just a little bit from there. But um, because that still looked like it might get that little bit of a fetch over. Okay. So when I go back to this, partly because sometimes the first one that's just in a better place from what you've got mm. looks always looks good, um, and then having hit a few others, you can go back to it. And it doesn't look anywhere near as right. near as good, but uh, should be. So actually, this one was a slightly heavier swing weight than I remembered it being. So the last, it's about a point lighter than the previous shaft. Right. So it should mitigate a little bit of that kind of have that requirement to fetch the club head through. Yeah, that, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's right. so I know it's a little bit, I know it's a little bit right, but actually like it, it didn't get that way on you. So, I'm going to see one more there, but I, 
that still to me looked like it dropped into plane better. Right. I'd almost rather see it face a little open and slightly healy, which this is a little harsh on some of the gearing. Um, I'd rather see it having a bleed that way than the mist going the other. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that, that's just a bit simpler through the hip. Yeah, so marginally toe side in the strike, but the face is a little bit like one degree open. Right. So there's nothing about that that's creating a flick left. Uh, and then like that, you can just pile straight through it and not worry about it. As long as you don't stall out on it and flip the head yourself. Yeah. As long as you just keep going with the swing, that's mitigating anything left. You can still play a draw from there because you haven't got to do much with the face mm. to square it off, but we're getting that neutral to slightly inside path. Yeah. And then a neutral to a marginally open club face. So that's, that's still in quite a nice place. I'm gonna go, okay. There's one other one I want to go back to. But it just, that started to look like everything kept together through the ball yeah. rather than having a little bit of I say, well, manipulation, a little bit of finding the ball with mm. it. Look, like you just stand and hit. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Certainly feels square. Do you think it's sometimes it's a combination of the better club plus hitting, hitting ball, hitting golf balls? A little bit. Find your time. Yeah, a little bit. Um, and what we'll do once we get the right one of these, then I'll then we'll just go back to your current one and see right. what that. Uh, what that feels like to swing. That was a bit dragged. Mm. I'll watch one more. And this one, this is the one that's just a few grams heavier. I felt that. So path fine, but and this is where we've got to look at okay, was that was that just a swing where it was a little less well timed so the club mm. got out of sink and then dumped left? Or is that something that actually we need to just try and avoid at all costs? Is it is it a case of as because I mean ball speed and club speed aren't really changing too much. Mm. It, it's that judgment. Is it was that just a slightly funky move, or is that the club doing that? Right. Yeah, there's a little bit, ball comes back nice and straight. There's a little bit of it just getting on, on your back hip a little bit and then just chasing around. Mm. Whereas this one just stays that little bit more out in front of you. So yeah. I think with that one, you've got to sort of hulk up a little bit more with it. With that, you can still be really committed, but you can just rotate through and collect it rather than having to pull on the handle as much. So maybe you pull on the handle, if it doesn't quite come with you, it gets behind and then you drag the toe over. Yeah, got ya. Whereas the, you know, that shot with the previous shaft, mm. just look, everything looked really simple through the ball. It didn't look like there was any time. Yeah. feeling for it at all. It just looked like it could just, you could just do that on repeat. Yeah. Sure, it's got nothing to do with the fact you like the look of it. That's what, with what, sorry? Sure it's got nothing to do with the fact you like the look of it. <laughs> I get a bit more pumped up when I see that nice <laughs> greeny blue colour. What I'll do, let me put the slightly bigger grip on mid size. Let's check your hand size to my. Yeah, definitely let me pop the mid size grip on just okay. to see what happens when I do that. Yeah. Just gonna, it's a fraction heavy, so it's gotta add a little bit of weight just to get the swing weight back up in line with where we were. 
How do you do that? Is that lead? Um, in the fitting, but yeah. I mean, there are different weights we can use for the back. Um, not widely available, those weights, but uh, thankfully we've got the, got the wrench that works with it. Okay. Oh, what, these weights aren't widely available? Yeah. So they, they, they have a um, wrench with a very slightly smaller right. um, thread on it. Oh, what, so the average person can't get that out no. unless they've got that special one? Yeah. Interesting, I didn't know that. So they are technically changeable, but just not, not if they can help not, it. Not for most. Looks much simpler through the ball. Yeah, there's the nice thing is that there's no left in that. Yeah, it's just that little bit of a change of the handles now coming with you, so that can, as you turn, it can lead the club head through naturally rather than it just getting. If you get a hair out of sync, getting just a little behind, then the club head catapulting. Yeah. So hence. You know, yeah, I like that. I feel like I can feel that club a bit more at the top. Mm. Um, and then pull the trigger for the way down. Yeah, and what, watching you swing, and that's really the key for me, watching, I'm looking at sequencing and how you and the club interact. So, yeah. you know, the better the club set up, it drops in, and then as you come through, everything stays very, very stable. So you're looking at body, arms, club, staying really, ultimately, synced up. Yeah. That then stops any requirement for a um, bit of rotation, whereas for me, I have a little bit of a drop in, so a little, it's always a little bit more um, Zorro like through the ball. So I've got to create, I've got to go a heavier tip to drop the club in for my hands to hit against. For you, it's getting the whole club dropping in for it then to, for you kind of drive through from your core rotation. Right. And that's where just the fractional weight changes, balance point changes mean we can do it with the shaft rather than having to, rather than having to use. So in the past, there have been counterweights you can use or yeah, we can do it with the shaft set up rather than having to add extraneous bits on the club to do it with. Right, sure. Yeah, we're looking at a one or two gram change in head weight rather than a four or five. Yeah, a bit more simpler. Yeah, sometimes it's necessary, but if you can avoid it, it's better. Toey maybe, I'm not sure, that. that's pretty strange. A little bit, but what's really nice with that is that um, if we get those last two shots, you know, your path is 0.6 on one, 0.2 on the other, face yeah. to path 2.3, 1 really 1.2. Nice. So whilst that's slightly toey, um, the, the natural impact position is a slight fade. Mm. So the toe strike mitigates the open face and doesn't then loop. If you, if you were closing the face and toe strike, then it rips left. Right. So that's just drawn back to the middle rather than just bleeding a little bit right. But neither's a, a heavy movement. Mm. Um, so, you see, just, it's, it's not a lot out of the toe. Mm. You know, the previous one was yeah, similar. So actually, what's really nice is your, your strike pattern, ironically, has gone from, with your existing driver being slightly heel side. Towards the hill, yeah to slightly toe side. So that's where the change in linkage comes in. Mm. But we've also gone from, okay, more out to in and kind of slightly over the top to neutral square with a slightly off, yeah. open face. So the, the delivery is really, really, really square. Mm. And the open face and the slight toe strike actually kind of manage one another. There's one, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take out, just cause I think that's gonna, I don't want it to, affect the average because mm. that's a bit of an outlier. Yeah, that's ugly. Um, but yeah, you know, 0.3 on the path, one and a half open. So a marginal post strike just means that the face and the gearing cancel one another out. Right. Um, so actually it's the perfect miss for your face angle. And if you middle it, so what, it drifts a little bit right. Mm. But you've got to go way out onto the toe to get one looping. So right, right, right. The, the more you just keep turning through, you can, you can keep building more speed. And it's not starting left, going left. It might, you might hit just a slight draw but more through strike point. Okay. Um, so we're just taking out that, that element of variability. You've got a tolerance of 0.9 of a degree on face to path, half a degree on path, yeah. just over half a degree on angle attack. So it's, 
you know, for somebody who hits it the distance you do, that's such a reliable grouping. So that means you can essentially set up left center of a fairway and go, okay, if I nuke it, it's left center. Mm. But generally speaking, it's going to start left center of the center and just drift back. Mm. That, that's what I like. And yeah. that one, the furthest right, is, I find these ones, where is it? It's that one, is less than, it's 20 yards right of mm. center. So that's just off a fairway. But if you've aim slightly left of center, that's right half a fairway. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's not exactly moving. I mean, that one's shaped seven yards. So it's not exactly moving a long way. Seven yards, on, that's not so bad. Just a little can slight push. You, yeah, on, on average, okay, the average takes into account some slight draw, some slight fade, mm. but there's, it's a very, very, very quiet, you've got, you've got a tolerance of 20 foot in terms of shot shape. So essentially 14 yards left to right, which is, Less than half, well, it's less than half a fairy in the US Open, so mm. it's quite nice. So, oh, I'll go to the Open, the regional <laughs> qualifying then. <laughs> uh, and the other bit that's actually working quite nicely here as well, um, like head style is keeping, it's, it's a very safe um, set of launch and spin, so we're looking at you know, 10 launch and 2 1. Yeah. Uh, that one was a calculation, so that's just going to, you know. 12, slightly toe one, just under 2,000, which at your mm. speed's okay. Um, then you know, the one that's drifted a bit right, 10, half, two and a half, again, that's, that's the sort of numbers that a lot of the tour players would look for so that it doesn't get, get too knuckly or kind mm. of dip away. Um, yeah, would you like to see that on like a, on a, on a bat worse, like a poorer shot, like a higher spin rate? Moving towards uh, the right side, and landing right soft. Back. Yeah, I mean, so we'd look at the, you know, going on to optimize that. <laughs> Pick up the right. You can see, you know, that one. Yeah, they're saying based on a slight squeeze angle attack, you know, upper mid launch, lower mid spin. That's actually really, really efficient. Um, you know, because it's you've got the launch angle. Mm. Okay, your speed. There's always going to be plenty of height, but it, it doesn't risk it knuckling off. But it's keeping the spin in check. You know, if I go on the on the averages, 10.724. That's incredibly efficient from a flight point of view but still with quite a safe spin rate. Um, again, even if I take off the one it missed the spin on, 10.723. Now, this is for carry in total. That's only a fraction underneath the optimal spin rate level. Mm. So because you've got the launch angle, your height's absolutely fine, and then you're hitting bang on optimal carry in total numbers. Um, so, you know, go on to total. Again, it's, it's there even though in theory there's another couple of miles an hour ball speed. The flight's in such a stable place um, that it's really, really efficient. And mm. again, you can look at the grouping from there. It's not exactly that bad. Um, yeah, no, it's not, uh, nice. So okay, another one. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a couple of... Whilst you hit another one, I'm going to get a couple of other heads to compare with. Yeah. A little open. Yeah. yeah. Toby. Yeah, it's, it's a funny. I mean, it, it's one of those it's ones where I would, far off. I would rather for you, especially with what you're doing at the moment. Yeah. I would much rather see that as the miss, because that's just one where, again, you're you're wanting to see if anything the ball drifting left to right. Mm. So, from that you go, okay, well I can just, I can really commit to turning through, and it's not going left. Whereas yeah. if it starts to go left, then you've got to manage the face. God. And then you're in a world of pain because you go, well, if the bad one goes left, if I'm aiming up the left, then I'm really in trouble. Mm. Whereas if you aim left half and it goes a bit right, that's what Monty always used to do. Um, <laughs> but it gives you it? a one-way miss, which is really, yeah. really key. That is, yeah, huge, really, isn't it? And actually, one of the things with that head, it sits a slightly flatter the lie than some. Does it? So again, that on its own also, again, just it's marginal, but just errs it towards the right, right. side too. Got ya. I'm going to try and hit this one hard, see what happens. See if... So again, I, I don't mind seeing right. that because that again, you see just a little bit of slight kind of cling onto the club mm. head, which if that left hand seeds a little bit of control and allows it to square up, 
it's one degree out to win. Right. And it just then goes straight. But that's then really, really gone. You got a little bit up on it. So that's then give you more launch and kept the spin in check. So as I said, I'd much rather see it that way because yeah. that means you haven't got to control the club base. You can just keep on turning through. Yeah. Okay. Got ya. Good news is club speed went up as well. Yeah. Doesn't okay. always happen. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just cross reference that. So in terms of relative to your current setup, we're about a swing just about a swing rate point heavier. Mm. Just under D four. Um, this shaft's going to be a hair shorter, um, quarter inch, 44 and three quarters versus okay. 45. So we're up five grams or so in terms of shaft weight. Um, structurally, the, the Speeder NX, the green is, is very tip stable. Um, Speeder NX series, they've, they've used some torque bar. I think it's um, some of the torque bars core, um, you know, your learnings. It's not got Velocore in, but it's, they've, the Speeder NX, they, I mean, every, series they run, it's a Fujikura shaft, obviously, hence the better core comment. Um, they learn from what they do with other models. They might not incorporate exactly the same materials, um, hence the different model run, but mm. actually a lot of the, um, the rotational stability that have taken bits from the Velocore to have incorporated that into the NX green material. Right. So the blue is the slightly softer mid, softer tip, a little bit more flight. This one's the one that's a little more stout all the way down. Okay. Uh, right. Go into LS Tech Ping. I mean, it's going to be quite hard to beat that. Yeah. I used to play a lot of ping. I used to play a lot of ping drives when I was a bit younger. Um, mm. What would you say the main kind of difference is in comparison to like the Taylor Mate? Uh, I mean, generally speaking, ping have always been what almost a very safe from a club head point of view, and I mean that as a, as a strength of it, in terms of their, um, they're not volatile for spin. Right. Um, so they've always been good off centre. Um, generally a toe strike, the tailor-made's historically, a bit like the cameras, used to kind of take a little bit more spin off. This was a little bit less knuckly out the toe. Now actually, because the face is hanging a bit open, toe strike actually creates a really efficient spin out of the tailor-made. Right. Uh, and they're not as, these are term bad, they're not as volatile as they used to be. Um, in that contact point. Okay, so. Do you have a, it may be controversial to ask a club fitter, do you have an opinion of the best driver that's been made? Ever. Ever, Ever. yeah. Um, I think it, it's all, or I think you've got to take it relevant to the time that it came out. Sure. Um, so, um, uh, can't multitask. Uh, I would say, what would I say? I can look, 400 max from a consistency point of view was a, was a really, really good head. And the, the off-center performance of that going back the five, six years or so that it came out <coughs> was really pretty impressive. Um, the ping, ping for Yeah. Matt, yeah. Um, I think, it's funny, I think you go right back, the, the 975 Titleist. They were, right. that was really, I mean, you've got to say, you know, Callaway when they weren't the, the bigger heads Big initially, Bertha, like, that was, that was game, they've, yeah. they've always been certain ones that game change over the change, years, yeah. I think that was one of them. Um, I think, trying to think, the, the Titleists were just a, a head that the, the players loved, I think it was the look and the sound and the yeah. control out of them. Um, is that the one that Tiger used in a five wood for a long time, or is that a different model? That was, uh, he had a PT, it was a really small one for a long time. Right. Um, he played the... 975D, right. which was smaller than the J that most players played. Right. Um, I think through, I mean, look, I mean, Taylor made always been very good with the drivers. I mean, SLDR game changed yeah. in terms of the spin. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. unplayable for a lot of players, but yeah, yeah, ball yeah. speed and low spin, because that weight, the center of gravity was so low and so far forward, you couldn't right. beat it. If someone really? got one out the middle, it was utterly unbeatable, yeah. which was, great but it was also bad because the problem was that the really good one was so good and then yeah. the okay one was just nowhere near yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that kind of showed if you took it to the extremes it showed kind of where you couldn't go to anymore do you think that's probably yeah. do you think that's the most recent like like you said game chain the game changer or do you think like the the carbon wood i I, I, I think the original epic sub-zero 
was a that was a really the con, to get the low spin and consistency. That was a very very impressive head. That was a even, landmark. Even go back to that. That was the first one with the jailbreak tech. Um, when did that come out? How many years ago was that? Ooh, um, hmm. Good question. Probably there's so many models in between us. It's probably again that five six years ago. Yeah. That was the first one. They used the jailbreak to stop the head deforming as much. So now they they're using other materials and and structures that mean they don't need to. But um, to use that same sort of frame. Yeah. Um, enhancement. Do you still but, think there's technology and distance and more consistency in the tank for future distance releases? Is, distance is of clubs very hard to argue that there is simply because they've limited ball speed off the middle of the face. Okay. There's only so much you can do with the, the, the ballistics of launch and spin. So I think the where there is a slight, their slight gain still to have is ball speed across the face. Right. And probably actually spin consistency across the face because a heel strike spins so much that you lose a lot of efficiency on flight. Um, we're getting towards it where the toe's getting less low spin volatile, the heel's getting less high spin volatile. So right. we're seeing it starting to level off. Level out. Um, so you think that's the direction they're going and there is still, there's that's still the stuff left in the tank? That's there's probably. anywhere left, right. I think, which is to do with, some, with the actual uh, the rigidity of the frame, where the weight position. We're starting to see setups now where th if you remove a load of weight from the front of the head, so mm. if you take you know, some of the, the current Callaways where you've got you know, a very light carbon center, the face is relatively heavy and then a heavy weight at the back, the, mm. the Max version for example, or the QI10 in the Max, there's a load of weight at the back which if you, if you rotate in, the, in your downswing, that weight at the back actually holds the face open. Right. So there's a, if you ha have a certain swing style, there are now heads that actually it's hard to control the face with the weight that's far back. So I play a weight forward head right. um, because it just opens up on me and I've then got to turn it back in. Mm. Um, so there, yeah, the theory of the 10K kind of forgiveness drivers are great, but actually there are some players it hurts by moving that much weight from the face. So right. they're little bits, inevitably they'll, they'll, something will come and you go, oh, I didn't see that coming. Um, I just think now with drivers, we're so close to the limit mm. that the rest is marketing. Uh, In I, the think, future. I think it's getting hard to tangibly say, right, this head is definitely going to be better right. than that. Like if you've got one that's five, six years old, okay, yeah, yeah. We, can, like we can improve off center performance from that one, yeah. without doubt. Um, ball speed maintenance, you know, the composite face, yeah. you've gone um, 60 layers of carbon, it's, they've saved 15% of the face weight. That's right. quite a lot. Um, it might be a wrong stat, it might be more than that. Um, but that then allows them to redistribute the weight so it improves the balance of the head off centre. So right. they've been from that kind of era to this, there's been tangible gain across the board. Right. Um, but the middle of the face isn't going to be any, any hotter than that. Right. Because yeah. they're not allowed to be. Let's give this one a crack. So slightly bigger look of head mm. on this one. Felt nice. Was quite nice. Yeah, should. It's a friend of mine says you should buy in that one. <laughs> <laughs> but again, what's what's actually quite nice with that swing? This also shows how well the shaft sets up. In that, um, we've just stood. It's a bit like waiting on a tee for things to yeah. We just stood chatting away, and then bang, we're still in a very very neutral position. So that backs up. It's not just a case of having hit loads. This of shots. looks quite nice, doesn't it? Yeah, that, that works, that works, yeah, yeah. yeah and then the what, path and this is the face. Um, face to path? What, just is a that hair like open again. So the, fa the club face open? Just a that, half a degree. Just, yeah, okay. So it's that same pattern, <laughs> neutral diffraction open, centre to a hair toe, that the two just sort of cancel yeah. one another off. Oh, yeah. And one straight. day, one day, one day I would like to see as well, not, zeros not, not. Yeah. across. <laughs> I think there's an element of luck in that. Highly though, Instagrammable moment. Yeah. That, yeah.
Sorry. Same same thing, slightly toe side with a slightly open face that the two can see one more. There's on face value it looks like this isn't quite as quick as the tailor made. Mm. Which can be down to both a little bit of aerodynamics on the head. Um you know, yeah. efficiency's still pretty good, but we look like we're a couple of two a couple of miles an hour down on uh, club speed and ball speed. Yeah, because the last one was again one very, very consistent balls. We 163 on the nose both yeah. times. Um, but 166 on average with the tape. Now, okay, let's, let's just take out the effort swing. 165. So a couple of miles an hour down. Right. Both on club speed and ball speed versus the tailor mode. Flippy, that one. That one had That's a little right. bit more speed to it. I, it's, I think it's one of these. It's, it's doing exactly what a ping driver does. It's very, very stable, very, mm. very consistent. I, I, I really like the way the shaft swings. That, that's, I'm really happy with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like that. But it's, again, like grouping-wise, very similar. Mm. It's just, it's a little less fast. Mm. Um, so you. Five yards, and, that's, and the, the effort swing is still out of the table. So you're five yards back, but slightly higher flight, but mm. not enough to be a concern, but just a little less quick. I'll pop, I'll just check the other two. I mean, that would, that's still you know, a very, very sound option. If you're 300 yards plus, then yeah. a few yards is not make nah, or break. Yeah, especially if it's a little straight up. This is really why we fit. I've always fitted shaft first because I want to get the timing and the the line through the ball as neutral as possible, mm. and then we can really gauge how the heads are performing. Because then we're not you're not sort of trying to find contact or managing the swing. You're just moving on it, so we can see ultimately where the differences in the heads are. You know, the shaft sure. feel, but about finding as stable a timing as possible, um, and then. Head governs a little bit of ball speed, but pitch or flight. It's got a slightly heavier weight for the. Yeah. Bellatas, are they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we typically, after we did the piece at Christmas about like old school hickories and things, oh, we yeah. then found the Bellatas after we'd done it. Oh, nice. So uh, they feel amazing, they. What, like nice and soft off the face? Are they? With, with a wooden head. Those, yeah. those are the wooden. Wooden wood are a wooden, yeah. oh, amazing. I, I hit a wooden head for the first time last year just because mm. my dad had one and I took it yeah. on the course. The feel of it off the face is just like, yeah. it just feels so good. Well, you obviously got to strike it good, but that, that feels unreal. Payoff. Yeah, there is zero margin of error. Nah, none. Um, that was one of the things that we saw is that if you missed it, it went sideways. Yeah. And one of those things spins 1,500 revs more with a driver. So hence you really? had to launch it low to then mm. let it spin up. But, um, Such a, a uh, <clears throat> quite a big, um, I can't think of the word, quite a big deal to try and like minimize spin, get it through the wind. Yeah, a lot of work I mean, a bit, trying to work quality shots Quality of strike like and, yeah, and quality manipulation strike. of flight was so, so critical but yeah. hence the distance was less of an issue because yeah if you put if you try to hit it too hard and you miss it you just you drop back 30 yards mm. um or it went sideways into the yeah. heather or the ruffle um, so that's where you know, someone like greg norman with the driver with a wooden wood and a balata was so far ahead of other players and then yeah. the moment where they went metal woods and into the title into the pro v1 style ball it just you know took away most of his advantage mm. um it's still long and great driver ball, but the Bellata and the wooden was just separated them from everyone else. Right. Yeah. He had that much of an advantage. Mm. So.
good ball speed. A little left. Yeah. To for a toe strike. So quite interesting. Not much more of a toe strike than the other heads, but that's geared it a little bit more. Mm. So again, delivery is still one degree open to path. You know, really good ball speed, but that's just punished you a little bit more for the yeah. missed strike. The club speed can come up a bit, the nip, as opposed to the little the bit ping. Yeah, little but bit. Um, I suppose that's just a question, a question of consistency. If it is, yeah, so I, didn't, I mean I didn't that really one's hit, quite interesting really because the other two yeah. heads didn't and that's where the twist face on the tailor made it starts yeah. it a little bit more right before the gearing taking effect and right. the ping potentially just being a little bit better and so i found this head where my miss is generally slightly out the heel mm. is unbelievable slightly out the heel right but that's probably where it's just slightly less good for you out the toe right what well, did you say this is the the sweet spot is more towards the heel then uh, or is it just more so to do actually, with the weight um, and stuff more to, it can just be the scaling head. I'm going to move the weight just a little, little towards the toe line, just to right. see if we can mitigate some of that, uh, some of that gearing. It's nice. where you know the Callaway heads again have historically been very good out the heel, mm. but a little knuckly out the toe on the right. low spin ones. So some Hot. brands and base designs have always just been a little bit better out of certain bits of the head than others. Okay. Good. That looked a really lovely move through the ball. Okay, yeah, it's a bit more spin, just not quite as efficient on the flight. It felt quite nice, but um, yeah, the ball speed further solid, right than I thought it was. Okay. But it's just not as the spin proportions just up a little bit. Right. I, I just got a uh, Mizuno, yeah. Mizuno one for my, for my yeah. flat. Yeah, yeah. Um, they just look quite cool, didn't they? Nice little office piece. What do you, uh, what do you store in there? Old range balls? Nothing at the moment. <laughs> I chucked a few wires in there just so I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't be bothered to find a home for them. They are, I think it's like that are fun. There's a, um, looking at getting a, uh, a, a good friend of ours out in the States who does uh, a load of um, wooden flags Right, uh, it's called Old Glory 1350. Um, so we're looking at getting a display kind of flag done for here at some point, and mm. just stuff like that is just really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool, isn't it? Okay, I'm just going to get slightly heavier weight for this again. Just fun to have stuff like that around as well. Mm. I didn't realise that Cabretta leather was only used in golf clubs. Pretty much exclusively golf gloves, yeah. There are some women's fashion gloves that will use it, and okay. like some handbags as well. But it's really, it's, it's probably. I mean, I don't know the, the percentage-wise, but it's probably ninety-nine point five percent. Not thinking about branching out into handbags and. <laughs> if there's money there, and <laughs> if the price is right, I'll do it. GX handbags. What does the X here? stand for? Um, excellence. Okay, yeah. Golfing excellence. Mm -hmm. Which is a lot, you, a lot of people ask that question as well. It's, um, Decent ball speed. One of the things we found with I this like head is it flight. does have that little bit of a lower, it's, it's quite a low spin head. So Paradigm, Triple Diamond last year um, was, was pretty low spin and the AI spoke this year is pretty low. So where it's been good, if for example, if you're looking to see a little bit more launch, sort of up and out flight, right. this head allows you to go, allows to go a little more base loft to keep, and, and 
get the spin low, so more of a up and over. Yeah. More of a sort of Whereas rainbow the, flight. A little bit more, yeah. yeah. So that one, you know, 11.3 launch, 1900 right. spin. Um, get very, very similar strike point to everything else. Um, but it's likely to just keep the spin down a little bit. So mm. the only question mark on this is then again, if, if that side of if you don't leave the face open, you get the same strike point, does it nose dive a little bit? That's the only right. question mark to it. But okay. a, you know, from a raw yardage point of view, this will be long. Okay. Callaways are notorious for that, aren't they? Just to be in, for being like quite long drivers. When they've, they? when they've, I guess I'm saying got it right. Um, they've they've had some pretty long hitting heads over yeah. the years, but they've generally always been um, actual measured loft, slightly higher loft to other brands as a result of that. So again, as a, as a club had to get high launch, low spin. They've always been good, but if you tend to prefer seeing the fight a little bit flatter, that's then where the tail main naturally keeps the launch down just a touch more relative to spin. Right. So um, it, it's kind of a bit horses for horse courses in terms of ball flight. And just on this, I think whether if you haven't got the face two or three open and you get the same strike point, does that drop down to 1700 revs? Mm. If it does, then that could just, if you've got a bunker you're trying to carry, that could then just sort of fall out the sky a little yeah. bit. So that's the only question mark. I mean, it's the nicest Callaway driver I've seen in a long time. This, this is like really good. Look, I think they're kind of the, the, the showing the weave and the composite on the crown versus the blue. I think quite a lot, quite a lot of people like that. Right. Um, I think just the general shape of it's quite nice this year. Um, solid feeling head as well. Yeah. That was towed. Okay. Dropped That's not a, little not a horrendous bit. miss. Let's just see. Dropped a little bit more speed. Might just be worth seeing one more of that. Okay. I think, I think if you were just looking for the one lasso every now and then, I think this would probably give you that one that jumps out there a little further. Right. Um, I think for kind of, you could argue potentially ultimate consistency and safety may be the ping. Yeah. I still wonder whether all around performance the tail is slightly better. Right. I was a bit off on that one. I think it's a little there. Okay, so bad. slightly more, and it's only it's a, a bit few hits here. If I look at one element I'm sort of looking at here is the, and it's just gone off screen, the, the number underneath the tolerance. So the best one for spin tolerance, mm. you can see here, is the tailor made. Right. 250, and that's 430. So that's almost three, well, not quite double, but it's not a million miles off double the tolerance on high low spin. So again, that consistency of pitch of flight. If you mm. get a little low on the face or a little toe side, the, the spread in spin is quite heavy. So you're going from you know two nine with one to nine to nineteen hundred. Whereas Taylor made it's two six to nineteen hundred. So yeah. for me I would then take that out because I think just that being able to see a more stable pitch of flight. Yeah. I think it's more, more important that that one that might just run seven yards further. Mm. Mm. And again, going between two again, the ping, pretty, pretty stable to spin as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, pulling those back together. Um, you know, ball speed on the Titleist and the Callaway are, are both pretty good, but the, the spin relative to launch angle on the Titleist wasn't, wasn't quite as good. Um, and we can see where launch angle's a little bit flatter. Um, and then the, the, the volatility is the exaggerated word for it, but the extended spin variation with the Callaway for you, just not quite so as does, good as well. does a spin, you said this number's called volatility. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Top tolerance, is this so plus tolerance, minus sorry. 450. Is this, um, does that relate somewhat to 
um, how off how off centre the ball um, goes because of the can fire do spin. from a toey point of view. If that kind of knuckles off, it can it can get away left a little bit more. Yeah. Um, it just means you're a little bit more susceptible to conditions. So if you if you get a little bit low like that last one, a little low on the strike, up goes the spin, and then it's more affected by um, by any kind of wind or anything like that. Right. Um, so you know, being able to control the flight and pick a flight window, particularly at your kind of level, you know, seeing the same thing, one you near know, the reliability, shot after shot after shot, you mm. just know what you're going to get out of it. So um, a little bit of carry distance um, uh, compromise as well. Um, mm. So rather than just being ball speed related and how hard you hit it, it's then right where on the face is just a little bit more punishing. Mm. So, put the tail move back on. And that's you know, certainly one of the things that, you know, on tour they're always just looking for a combination that delivers the trajectory window that they're comfortable seeing, but, but a really narrow tolerance on that. Sure. So that they know standing over it, you know, playing, a, playing whichever hole they're on, they, they know what flight is going to come out, they know what carry distance, they know what kind of run out, given mm. you know, whichever set of conditions they're playing in week in, week out, they can accurately predict what the ball's going to do through the air and on landing. Yeah. So strategy on right, I can't reach that pond, I can't reach that bunker, or I can definitely carry that, rather than going, you know what, the good one carries it, mm. but if I get it a bit toey, it knuckles and it's in. Yeah. Um, those sort of I mean, small margins are still not performing woefully badly, but the other two are just a little bit more, con more stable. Higher. Yeah. yeah. Some good ball speed, slightly lower launch, so a little bit squeezed relative to some of the others. I quite like the consistent. Like I've seen a lot of them flights with this with this particular club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, like that felt like a nice swing, but it didn't feel like I thought mm, maybe. If I, maybe if I hit that with my driver or another one, it, I feel like, I don't know if it's just how it's luck or whatever, but I feel like it probably would have gone off centre a little more. I feel like these, I feel like this goes, this is quite like forgiving in terms mm. of um, tightness of the misses. Doing it as a head or just the, the, the whole thing, the whole I thing think. relative to what your current or with that head and shaft particularly? With my current with, and with like, compared to the others as well. I just feel yeah. like, I don't know if the numbers show that particularly, but that's just how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, well, I think from a, I'll put it on total, from a total, dis oh, there are lots, let me just clear out some of these <laughs> we don't need. There are a few of those we, we're not, uh, not so worried about with different shafts. So let me just get rid of the ones that we're, when we're going through the shaft test. Okay. Uh, so yeah, with the, which one was that one with? That was with your current driver. So again, that drop back on a miss hit with your current driver. So that's that's slightly kind of wider mm. um, distance progression. Why uh, right a little bit more with the Callaway? Maybe a little bit more front back dispersion. That's the spin variation. Um, there was one right with that setup, but mm. generally speak, I mean actually, I mean dispersion with this shaft generally. Yeah, we've. And that was the tight list, um, that which is where it geared a little bit more the tight list. So mm. with, the, with the ping and the tail of mage, we've, we've eliminated, eliminated anything that goes substantially left. Mm. Um, I think it's, some of it is if, if, the, if it gives you the feeling of a bit of confidence with it, that can sometimes, because actually from a, a, a shot pattern dispersion, it's not that dissimilar. It's very similar to where the, uh, where the ping is. Um, right. And even the, the Callaway was just directionally very consistent, mm. but just a little bit more volatility up and down on the spin. Okay. Um, so I think that shaft and balance dynamic, that's the bit that gives you the left-right control. Okay. Um, and I think 
really for me between the two heads, give or take a few yards, I think it's if there's one that either just feels more comfortable to hit with or just whether one might feel a bit hotter, one might feel a bit more stable, you know, we'll get a couple more with this and we'll switch back to the ping and see mm. if hitting a few more endings stands out. But um, they're, they're both going to time more cleanly than your current setup. And therefore that's the bit that, because you're having to do less through the ball to, mm. to manage the club face, you're just turning on it. So yeah. there's less that can go wrong because it doesn't require you to manage the face. So you're just clearing Giving through and that's the bit that tightens yeah. up the dispersion. Okay. Mm. You know, if the numbers are very similar, it can literally be very subjective. Right. It's just a, just a know, case of what having played tailor made, you, you like the brand, like yeah. the feel, because um, ultimately you, you've got to look forward to hitting it. Yeah. And that one just came over it a little bit. More. Yeah, felt that. <laughs> That is no good. Yeah, that was a little um, sort of. That that was the one that looked like just had that little bit of a stand yeah. up and rolled it. Because path didn't get out to in on it. That just rolled the face a little. We'll give it one more and I'll switch. So the, the path. So this path stayed this one into out. And that's the face relative to path. So face Which closed in a little sharp. bit. Sharp. Okay. Mm. But the and then path stayed a little bit into out. Right. Oh, this way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. That because I feel like when I when I do that, it feels like it's going like this. Okay. But it's yeah. actually like so. So you'd say it's more going like this kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's. So you said I think that's where the head the head rolls, and therefore the the kind of the the head travels that way yeah. rather than the handle going that way, and so right. it's, it's that rotation and the head going over there that feels like everything's gone left on you. So the handle going going this way is, is actually uh, so like pushing it and pushing the face more. Yeah, so more. that one, as the club went that way, the, it had that little bit more of that going on. So, yeah. so the head starts to turn left. I think that's where that feeling of it, and obviously the ball travels that way, that's where yeah. the feeling of everything going that way comes in, rather than turning there and the face staying stable. Mm. I feel like if I, if I can just nail that move, then I've just... Yeah, then it eliminates that one altogether. Mm. Then I'll have solved golf. <laughs> <laughs> if I can just do this one thing, yeah. <laughs> and that's how I'm sure that's probably how every golfer feels about um, about something in their game, don't they? Just varies day to day. That's the problem. Yeah. Just do that better. Yeah, but he's stayed in posture better on that one. On that yeah, that felt quite line nice. Line drive. Yeah, that's the one that's, again, that's slight, that's you know, 0.7 open, slight toe strike, slight draw. Yeah. So I think the one before was one where that, that going back to just having that little bit of stand up, that you stayed with it a bit better. Stayed with it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pop. That's a really nice, strong set of numbers. Well, yeah, I'm glad it shows that when I do sort of, I have been able to hit a few swings today where I've sort of kept it nice, a bit more mm. square, you know, I've shown a bit more um, improvement in there. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's been that that really very, very, very neutral square delivery. Mm. Um, and so the nice thing is because there's a tendency on the club face, then, yeah, there's a, a general shot shape just from a swing line tendency. And then just depending on the strike, it either holds its line or just turns a fraction or if you get it middle, middle, it's just going to bleed right, just an absolute fraction. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Based on where we are with the weight, we went heavier in the driver shaft when we mm. tipped it up over 80 um, and it got a little behind. I would not go heavy on the grip. Really? On the in driver. The, in the driver, yeah. yeah. Okay because we saw the moment we tipped it to over 80 grams, it started to get behind and then flip. So essentially, if we go to a, um, you would take something like the Lampkin, the cross line mid-size, that's a 64, five gram grip versus a 56, 57 gram grip. Right. So 
you're then pushing that extra weight into the club again so the handle then doesn't quite come with you and then the head flips because we'd have to up the head weight to counter the heavier grip. Yeah. So you're then pushing eight, nine grams into the club dead weight. So like regardless of how I feel and like why, what I like feel with the clubs, mm. from what you've seen today, would you, do you agree with me having these grips? As much weight completely as that regardless in, of what I feel? Probably not. Right. Um, I think there's a, there'll be, it, it might have been that where they were before, before putting those in was a little too far and heavy. So right. by alleviating that, that have felt more comfortable. Mm. Um, but I think it would be interesting to, to do a test with some different grip weights on a club of that length of that shaft and see, right, where is the sweet spot with it? Because mm. um, I would say at, you know, C four and a half of that length, there's very little natural flow in the bottom end. Um, it's just that your technique's good enough to make it work. Right. But I think your control and shot shaping and you know, the ones if you're not just playing a stock swing, that's where I think the, the performance is likely to drop off where they're at. Right. Because there's just not the natural flow of weight. They're just swinging very much in that top end. You're swinging the grip rather than the head. So if you're just on the range hitting balls, you'll, you'll be able to you know, laser it. But the moment you have a you know, flight it down or fade it a little bit, draw it a little mm. bit, play a three-quarter shot, that's where the fine control is likely to not quite be there. Right. And I'm sure it, it um, does all sorts of stuff to the kick yeah. point, the stuff like so that. So it won't right. change that. It literally is just no? shifting weight up and down. Right, um, okay. So it doesn't change the way the shaft bends. Um, and actually, because the mass on the bottom is the same, it doesn't change how that loads the shaft. Yeah. It just chain, it's, it's like, it's, it's just sticking a load of weight under your hands. Yeah. Um, so it changes the dead weight and then the balance point in the club, so therefore how it, so, so it's no different than, um, well, okay, actually it's slightly different, but then, then you know, taking a club and turning it around, you know, the, the total weight of the club is the same, mm. but where the weight sits is differently. Now, by putting weight in there, the total weight has changed and so you still got the mass on the bottom, you then loaded up the grip end. So with the same acceleration pattern, the shaft's gonna load and bend the same way, but it's just how much has that weight changed the connection between you and the club and then what you've got to do to put it on the back of the ball. Right. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, would you, so also, would you say that there's kind of like a, uh, not only the, the weight is so, di but there's vastly different to a weight of like a driver and like where that swing weight is. Do you think that's like quite, da do you think that's a l damaging at all to have s clubs that, to be swinging a six iron and then trade to a driver where it's, it, where it's so much different? Uh, yeah, because you're essentially, because the, the flow of the weight is different, yeah. your timing has got to be different than one to the next. So at, be very at standard length, quite often the swing rate of the driver and the six iron are very, very close. Now, those right. are longer than standard, so that shifts the parameters a little bit. Um, but if we're at basically D4 on this, to be 10 swing rate points lighter on that, that and say so it's kind of different that way around in that we've, it's heavier rather than losing weight in the head to lose swing weight, it's heavier grip end to lose yeah. swing weight. So it's not quite as, it's not quite as vast a difference as it kind of appears. Um, but it will still affect your ability to switch from club to club and get this and, and put the same feel the same swing on. on. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause I, I, I have, I have one of them grips in my two iron mm. and I feel like I just don't have that much control with that. And I yep. think that's probably, and it's a, it's a graphite shaft in the two iron. So it's probably yeah, something to so do with that around. Proportionally, you've got 130 odd gram shaft in your irons and yeah. 90 odd in the two iron, or even if it's a hundred, it's still, you know, proportionally you're moving more of that weight around it's so actually, it will yeah, it's as more. the shaft gets lighter it affects that the way it swings more and more and more right We've got some zeros Perhaps there. Very, very, we very. do have some zeros. Very, very zero. Slightly lower on center, so mm. a little bit more spin. Um, that club spin went up a little as well. Yeah. From, uh, 
from the uh, previous swings with that, isn't it? So yeah, you're kind of one ten through one twelve, and that's got a little bit more. I, and I think, I think what this head's going to give you is the maximum left-right control. I think yeah, it looks like that. That it? gives a little bit more yardage, being a little lower spin. Um, so yeah, one sixty-eight yeah. ball speed on that versus exactly the same ball speed with the previous one the tailor made now th that was also marginally toe side marginally higher yeah. at the face however i, th I think yeah th that's the kind of the exaggerated difference between them i think the tailor made has a little bit more shot shape to it, a little bit more left right dispersion mm. but is a bit longer the pin, how much how much longer is the i mean the average wise <laughs> average is about four yards carry um, or total uh, or both Two or three, couple, couple carry, four, four total. Okay. Um, so it's it's not huge, and this is the thing between. Mm. There's really not not a lot between the two. Nah, yeah. Um, but that would be the slight. You know, if you if you played some, so if you're playing your golf on the links, I give you the tail mode every time because right. that lower spin is just going through. Um, playing inland golf. That's that's still a hair higher than I'd want to see it, but that was a little bit below centre. Then is that one that's yeah. you know. Two and a half thousand. It's still probably three. What was the spin difference on average? Yeah, three hundred revs difference or so. Um, so it's it's not so much that one's going to be as, as we can see from that's a few yards. It's not like ten, fifteen yards shorter. Given if you play in stronger wind conditions regularly, that spin is going to affect you a little bit more. So. Um, if you're playing somewhere where carry carry distance was most important, the higher spin is not the worst thing in the world. Um, for UK conditions, the, the slightly lower spin would be where I generally err. Uh, um, if you're in Arizona, the higher spin might not be the worst thing in the world. Mm. Yeah, so, um, but yeah. if we can squeeze out another five or six yards and into wind, you're going to look at 10 to 12 yards. Mm. Downwind, less of a difference. Then there's just a little extra from a shot value point of view in there. Yeah. So I'd so you think this, is, this would be this would be a stronger club the tailor made for that. That would be a stronger club when it comes to like wind yeah. windier conditions, yeah. Yeah. Because it naturally just keeps it you know, it's not like this is a high spin head, but flatter. it naturally keeps the spin a little bit lower. So it's just gonna bore through wind that little bit more. Yeah. Okay. So at the top of the flight it's gonna have that kind of flatter forward rather than just holding at the top of the flight a little bit more. Okay. And if you prefer visually the slightly stronger flight, mm. then that also, the tailor made leads to that too. I am quite um, impressed with the consistency of this one. Mm. You know. One we're just body stalled out a little bit, there'll be a little hair left. Yeah. Hair left, but not, not shaping hard. Right over the top. Higher up the face. Oh, okay. That, you know, that's probably the one where slightly higher toe, but yeah, that one's still right. one with slightly higher toe, but still spun. So carries not great because there, the angle attack got a little bit more down onto it rather right. than neutral to slightly or but very flat to slightly up. So I think, as you say, the left-right dispersion is very, very impressive on the thing. Mm. That truck, the tailor made trumps it for strength of flight. Yeah. So I think yeah, when when you see those sort of numbers, that's that's a nice three wood spin. Um, right. So strongest three wood, but still it's starting to get up a little bit, and then that that's just a little bit stally. So mm. 
for me, I just err to that head from an, it's marginal call, but it's an all round point of view. I think that just gives you just a, I say that, a little bit more consistency. Yeah. Top bottom in terms of spin. Probably so pay off. A little bit more punch on the flight. The consistency that, you f that I find in this might probably pay off when it comes to windier conditions with that, would you say? Yeah, I don't think, it's, it, it's not like we're seeing you know, big no, it's not horrific. It's in not terms massive, of you know, base yeah. to path numbers, there's point two of a difference on average. Mm. Um, you know, it, it's, and if we're you know, looking at side total, it's a matter of a few feet tolerance of, you know, say a little bit more, there's one a little, that little bit loopy one, it's mm. just exaggerating a little bit, but um, yeah, I, I think the extra flight strength on the um, on the tail end for me just that's the bit that as an all around club I think the fact that 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 that's in there from the tailor made that mm. puts your club closer to the green so um, and it's not like it's not like we're seeing you know three left four right there's the odd one say so one you step a little bit on that's loop left fine that's going to happen every now and then. Mm. Um, but then go back to that feel that you're working on. You just lasered it down the middle with as, as strong a fight as you're going to see. Um, and in a, you know, again, that's a really, really you know, upper mid launch, low mid spin. That's mm. absolutely perfect in terms of getting that bit of a bore to the flight, but without it coming out flat. Mm. So uh, to me, that just edges it. That's mm. you like that. Yeah. Mm. Do you want to prop the tailor made back on? Yeah, go on. Let's put that one in there. Mm. I think it's where in previous years it would have been more sort of more of a choice to be made of the, the one that last season goes miles, but more left right dispersion versus mm. you know, the very kind of steady safe one that yeah, yeah you give up a little bit more yardage but you don't get any of the volatility but or, or rather you know, marginally much less of it so um i think this is where the cross face performance on all of them now has got so much better yeah that it becomes a, a more marginal decision mm. Yeah, and that, that one, that one just backs it up. That one's then middle, middle, middle. Again, really nice sail. It's, it's, it's not got that up in spin. And again, as I put it onto here, it doesn't get the upper half of that spin. <coughs> yeah. So. It okay. it, yeah. Close to your zero down. Yeah. Nearly. But it means you can play that little bit of a fade without without the worry of it having the, the fade that turns into the stalling the fade. Yeah. You can just play that little bit of a bleed and it's still still mm, still kind of arrowing forward. Getting through, yeah. Without then having to get the launch angle low to stop it coming in. That's just the say mid upper mid on the launch, but then a very, very stable spin rate. Right. Pretty straight. Yeah, so just turn, a turned a little bit loft down on that one. Yeah, I felt that sort um, of come out quite flat. I mean, great ball speed. So it's on a hard, so on on a hard the, day. That's it. Oh, that's, yeah. Run quite a bit on it. But there's enough. There's still enough launch it. So yeah, we don't want it lower than that. Yeah. But it's it's done that from that kind of neutral strike point. So. Looks quite good.
back to that slight fade move. So, and then that, that's back to that slight fade move, slight <coughs> post strike. I don't know, I've never hit another one. Um, yeah, we're now seeing, you know, last four, 312, 307, 313, 312. Um, mm. Yeah, and just by virtue of it keeping that spin a bit flatter. So again, back into slight open face, slight toe strike. That's actually just then brought it into as, as good a result as a really middled out hit. So, right. Let's have a little look at nice. this, just at the, the sizing of the grip and whether actually the taper fits. So let's take a grip of it as if you're going to hit it. Yeah, so you absolutely wouldn't want to go any smaller. You could. Really? There's a little bit of extra kind of dig in there. You mm. could go a hair. It's a feel, so you could go a hair bigger. I wouldn't want to go bigger in the bottom hand, actually, right. looking at that. That's filling out that finger nicely. So sometimes you have to reduce the tapering. So mm. depend, looking at kind of hand, how hands are sort of made up, depending on the, the length in your bottom hand here. So you're, you're kind of like me, your hand comes back a little bit, so it's not overly long there. Mm. So you get others that go really long and that, or the palm kicks out a bit more. So kind of diagonal length is a bit longer, but for you, right. and probably also being left hand dominant, that, that hand's less likely to do something untoward. Mm. Um, so you were not looking to necessarily quieten down that right hand, as long as it fits in and the hand can rest on the grip nicely and comfortably, um, then, then for left hand player, it's more important that we make sure it fits <coughs> that hand really well. This one? Yeah, this one. So, so you could go just a fraction of an extra layer or so. It'd be interesting to see right. on this. That so is that is that is that a one one wrap? This is a, a single wrap mid size, yeah. yeah it's same on that. Yeah, so it's yeah. one of those where it's a mixture of theory and practice. I think with where the rest of the set is, um, it's. I it's, quite like the feel of this one, I think. It's a marginal call. It's, yeah. it's not one we look and go, right, there's loads of like overlap and dig in. Yes, yeah. we must go bigger. You know, it's already the frame size is already a little bit bigger. Mm. So I think it would be quite a different feel to go any more than a mid yeah. size. Yeah. But maybe, maybe like a, a layer or two. You, you could you go think? an extra layer or so. Yeah. Um, I think it's one way if it's comfortable, I'd be disinclined to risk making it feel like a cricket bat handle. Right. Um, and also we're not, it's not like you're wrapping it around left and we're trying to kind of make sure we fill it out so you, you get less of that rotation. Mm. Um, I think making sure it stays in the fingers rather than going to the palm of your hand is going to be important. Again, being left hand dominant, you can, mm. that keeps the feel in the fingers a little bit more. And yeah. I think if we go too big, potentially could lose a bit of sensation with the club. Is this why it's, it's almost more of a that's more of an issue for you being left-handed than right hand, where you generally in your dominant hand, it's hard to go too big unless the frame size is massive. Right. Um, so I don't want to be in a situation where in the fingers of your left hand, you kind of lose that sensation for club, but if it goes into the palm of it, it can, it can become a little bit um, muffled in right. terms of sensing where it is relative to your hand position, where it is in the swing. So making sure it stays in the fingers is a little bit more important, right? Than just going bigger for the so sake. So a bigger of it. one would sort of would put it in the palm more. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Down here, yeah. Such repeating timing with that shot set up. Yeah. Just another one up around the 310 mark down the right side of the fairway. So, so grip, grip type is a bit of a tactile thing. So mm. the tall velvet is a very similar feel to that. Uh, yeah. What have you got on? So the, the multi-compound midsize is marginally heavier, but not much, a few right. grams. Um, and then let's check on the wedges. I got those in the wedges, okay. I always found that the, the, the uh, multi-compound in this, mm. if, if this is standard, but it feels so slightly mid-sizing. Yes, yeah, less tapered in the bottom hand. So in your oh, really? right hand, it's gonna feel not a million miles off the mid-size, but the top hand's fairly standard. 
Okay, so it's not so it's le doing less of this and more just like so that. So the plus four is like the equivalent of building up the bottom hand by four layers. So right. it's the equivalent of going one, two, three, four, five. I see. Um, so. Oh, that's why it's plus four. Yeah, quite so, plus but four. we need the extra scale of the top hand as well. So right. if we went the plus four in the mid size, one, it's very heavy, but then the bottom hand ends up like a jumbo. Right, got you. I'll get a few grips that are the right kind of weight that give us that bigger size. So that italic. So, but that again, means so repeating in, in oh, that that's, we're delivery almost there. line. <laughs> we're almost there. <laughs> You'll be here all, all night to get naught, naught, naught. So, Grip type is, is, is all about how much tread and feel. So the, the tall velvet is just a standard, fairly soft feeling grip yeah. of which they do that, which the white paint in there makes it feel slightly different, but essentially it's the same base standard rubber. Right. Fractionally bigger tread pattern on it, fractionally, but you're very, very similar. Mm. Uh, so you've got the multi-compound on your three wood and, and the driver currently. Yeah. Um, it's a few grams bigger. You've got the cording on the top hand, a few grams bigger, a few grams heavier. Um, so it does push the weight a little bit, um, but only a couple of grams. So um, probably if, unless you really like that one, I'd probably prefer, based on what we've tested, they'd probably prefer to stay with one of the others. Right. Unless that is just a I don't, standout I don't, I, grip of choice. I've, I've never been someone who, yeah. who uh, has to stick with a grip. Okay. So, 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 so would you you'd probably, probably like, you like that one? Avoid, so we can keep the weight here. Yeah. So, that one, if you like the cording, the Z cord's one of them. That's going right. a little bit firmer. Okay, yeah. Feels all right. And that's a totally different material. So it's a. So are uh, these similar? These are all similar. These yeah, ones. Weight-wise. Weight-wise, yeah. Identical, yeah. Whereas that one, it's got a decent bit of tread to it, but it's uh, it's not a rubber. It's a different polymer. So it's slightly tackier feel. Right. Or. You do have just the. I I do like like bit. how this feels. Mm. For sure, I think it's. I'm quite. I've I've used these quite a lot before yeah. in the past as well. Um. Oh, there's not, I mean, they've been around a long time, but there's nothing nothing wrong with them at all. They're yeah. a fairly, if you want a better phrase, a fairly basic grip. But yeah. actually, they they still have that little bit of softness and and I wouldn't call it tackiness. There's, there is a bit of grip. There are rougher grips, but it all depends on how your skin texture is and as to what feels nice. You've got to mm. like the feel of it in hand. So. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a very, it's a very similar feel to what you've got in your irons, mm. um, but just because it's a yeah. simple grip doesn't make it a bad. I one. think before so. these as well, I had lambkins. Uh, okay. I've had, I've had tall velvets as well in the past. I quite like the feel that there's like not much going on there, okay. but it is, yeah, yeah. it's doing its job as a grip. Yep. You know. So the final oh, nice. question on that would be whether you'd want it that way around, where you've got the golf pride on the top, or you can put it. Mm. Effectively, logo down, so it's just you and club face. I quite like it up like yeah. that. Um, I got taught by Lee Scarborough back in the day. Okay. And yeah. He like he 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 asked this sticks with me now even. He set your grip beforehand, and I like I like to see that golf pride there, so I yep. can just put my hand in the same place every time. Okay. You know. Yeah. Yep. That's that's my got reasoning it. behind that. Perfect. So essentially, it's it's an update <laughs> on the head, and by virtue of the. Um, the composite face, the structure of the head, there's just better off-center performance, mm. retaining the low spin element to it, which is where the sim would have been a great head, but you know, slight heel and toe miss is, is just much better um, with this. Um, same nine degree, standard loft setting, that works great. The, um, the movable weight we can position, uh, you know, as it is center is good, you could move it marginally toe side, but I think yeah, that's something that can be toyed around with a little bit, but I would, I think, earth and neutral. There's not enough of a toe miss to try to move all the weight out there. Um, I think, and, and it mm. actually can kind of help just hold it from bleeding a little bit, but that's easily, easy changed should you wish to. But I think right. I'd start off with the neutral position. And um, so just remind me, it's cell neutral now, yeah? Yeah, yeah okay, smack, fine. smack bang in the middle. Yeah. Um, Do you ever see you find yourself moving that around much for yourself um, or for other people? It, it would only really be if there was a really notable pattern of miss Outside, out on the toe side, yours right. is very, very marginal. Um, so you know you might move it one notch. There's some little notches in the in the yeah. um, in the siding weight there. Um, or if someone's misses in the heel side, then yeah, you slide that into the heel. But mm. it's got to be a relatively notable one. If you're close to centre, then it's not going to do too much. You don't want to over move it and then find your gearing gearing the wrong way. Right. Um, so I think for where your strike pattern is, um, I, I would I would leave it central on this. Okay. Uh, and then shaft wise, we're up five, five or six grams, but 
Um, structure a little bit more stout, um, but a very, very neutral balance, similar to your, um, that has the smoke in that, um, but it's a structurally more rigid shaft. Um, and uh, just that few grams heavier, which just bound everything together mm. and then keep the grip weight nice and neutral. Mm. And then just like, can we, can we play a foursomes comp together? <laughs> Try and keep them. <laughs> try and keep as many zeros on the on the on the yeah. thing and as possible. And just really, always nice, really reliable shot shape. Mm. Really reliable, um, where your face to path and strike pattern came in. Um, really consistent flight and spin. Mm. And uh, yeah, yeah. Once I sort of got that, I think the mix of the of having a club that was felt so good and I could feel like I was committing to. Yeah. Felt more comfortable swinging through it once I sort of and then I sort of. Yeah, I could give it a little more. I've got the club speed up, up a little as well. Yeah, and it just looked like um, you were able to put, put that move on repeat yeah. rather than have that variability of just having mm. to put the club head, find that, mm. find the strike point. The wrist just like you just turn onto it and go. Yeah. Um, hence that, that left right dispersion. Right. I think that's what's stopping a bit of my consistency as well on, in, in my golf is that um, mm. if I can take this, what we've done sort of in the latter part of the fitting. Yeah with this club and take it onto the golf course, I can really sort of get committed to the drivers, get a few more wedges in, get a few more yeah. around the green, more birdie chances and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and what we're seeing as well is where you focus on start line, that start line, because the path and the face to path are stabilised, that, that start line's going to stabilise. So it's mm -hmm. not going to be, hang on, that started further left than I thought, okay, then kind of reorient your sights. It's just a case of, right, that's where I want to start point shoot and it's starting down that line or a fraction right of it yeah. it's not starting left of it and so um, I think that again just the confidence to say right that that's my spot go at it rather mm. than going hmm what if I pull one yeah, yeah and, that, and that's the shot that for me is kind of gone there's the odd one that goes very slightly left but it's the odd one rather than them all starting left and having to cut back you're not having to play the fade back no. to target it's just stand and deliver it's it either no, stays yeah. online or it just drops a little bit right there's not much yeah. manufacturing anymore yeah. when it comes to this this one as opposed to my driver on a mm. on a less than good day with that it's more manufacturing a shot yeah, yeah. kind of all right which you know you can you can still play all right for it with that but it is just not can you string four rounds together with that it's tough probably not you know? yeah, yeah, yeah probably tough. not whereas you know you know if you're if you're swings in a solid place you you know you know where this is going to go rather than mm, it should so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Good result. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sold.